I want to welcome you all to another lecture in our YouTube series on design of multi-storied RCC office building based on Nepal National Building Code. And in today's lecture, we will see at the design of our slab, our RCC slab in Safe Software. And we will look at the cracked section analysis in Safe Software. So before starting with Safe, what I would like to do is, as we did for exporting the footing details, that means the different reactions and different loads that is coming onto our footings or foundations, we imported all those information from ETABS to SIF, and we are going to do the same for the design of slabs also. So let's first open our model in ETABS here. You can see that our model is already analyzed and it is locked at the moment. And I want to export this information of our first floor slab from ETABS to SIF. For that, what I will do is, I will go to File, Export, and ETAPS.E2K text file. Sorry, not ETAPS.E2K. File, Export, and mm, let's see. The story is save v12.f2k file. So the story that I'm going to export is our first floor. That is 1F at J equals to 7.2 meter. So each story I will select as 1F. The loads to export, I will export floor loads and the loads from above. And select load cases, I will select all here. And load combinations also, I will select all. And then I will click on OK. Or what I can do is, I'm not going to export the loads from above because uh, that this this option I think we used during the design of our foundation or during the design of our mat foundation so since I'm going to design the slab for this floor only I will only export floor loads here so I will select this option export floor loads only and then click on OK so now you have to save this save file at your desired location so I will go to my desired location first and I will put the same file name here the save as type is save text file and then I will click on save here so once you save your file our work in ETAPS is complete now we will start with our work in save software so let me open this software So our program is open here. Before beginning with importing the safe file that we just exported from ETAPS, let me talk a little about the cracked section analysis or what is cracked section. Okay, suppose that this is our an example of simply supported beam. Simply supported means we have in support on one side and a roller support on another side here and a uniformly distributed load is acting on our simply supported beam let us call this uniformly distributed load is w kilonewton per meter so under the influence of this uniformly distributed load the beam will bend in this way this is what we will call positive bending moment or sagging bending moment and let us suppose that this is the cross section of our beam ours is a rectangular rcc beam so b is the width of the beam and d is the depth of the beam so what happens when the beam bends under the influence of the uniformly distributed load is that if you see at the bending section of our simply supported beam then what we will find is it will bend somewhat like this so what happens during this sagging bending moment or positive bending moment is that compressive stresses are generated at the top whereas tensile stresses are generated at the bottom if you look it from section view also if we suppose that this is our neutral axis here then 
this upper block of concrete develops compressive stresses whereas this lower block of concrete below the neutral axis develops tensile stresses so what happens is that as we increase the magnitude of this uniformly distributed load as we increase the magnitude of this w that is our load then these magnitude of compressive and tensile stresses will also simultaneously increase and if we keep on increasing the magnitude of this load there comes a time when the tensile stresses developed in concrete below this neutral axis will be more than the tensile strength of concrete that means as we increase the load acting on our beam these tensile stresses below neutral axis will also increase and there comes one point at which the stresses that is being developed in this beam is greater than the actual tensile strength of this beam so our stresses becomes greater than the strength of the beam so once the tensile stresses exceed the value of this capacity of our beam then now the concrete will not be able to take up such tensile stresses anymore is the concrete gets cracked and the whole tensile stresses is now borne by the steel that is present in this tension zone here so after the magnitude of the tensile stresses exceed the value of the strength of this concrete the concrete starts cracking and then the concrete no longer becomes capable of taking these stresses and after that point all these tensile stresses are taken up by the steel reinforcement present in this tensile zone so what happens is that below the neutral axis the concrete area is found to be ineffective as it is already cracked now and this is known as the cracked section so what safe software does is that it has an automated procedure that determines the cracked bending moments and curvatures for every element and then uses an iterative process to determine flexural stiffness modifiers so you must have heard the concept of modulus of rupture or flexural tensile strength of concrete so the modulus of rupture means it represents that value of the modulus of our concrete at which this first tensile cracks start to appear in this tension zone that is known as modulus of rupture and the value of modulus of rupture or flexural tensile strength of concrete whatever you say is given by 0.7 root over the characteristic strength of concrete this is given by the indian code and this gives us the value of modulus of rupture so after this short introduction to the concept of cracked section let us go to safe software and now proceed with the design of slab for that go to file import and safe f2k file select the file that you exported if these error reading line these messages are generated then just click on ok so you can see that our first floor slab from etabs is now exported into our safe software so now let's look at some of the details regarding what is exported here first let's go to define and then materials different materials have been generated here for example if you see this a416 yums here and then left click on modify so material uh, this is some kind of tendon type i think we have not or this material has not been used in our model here this csa g30 and this csa c30 this is our M30 grid concrete. So let's leave these three materials and go to this mat one. You can see that this mat one represents our concrete of strength 25 newton per mm square. So let me rename this as M25 and then left click on OK. This mat two material is our 
rebar of 500 grid steel so let me rename this as fe500 and then left click on ok this mat 3 material this is again 25 newton per mm square concrete i will leave this as it is you may change or you may not change the name it doesn't matter and mat 4 is again this is m27.5 we will not need this because we are not using this concrete here so these materials that we define in etaps have also been exported to safe then after that let's go to define and slab properties you can see that slab 1 which is our 200 mm slab and if you see this slab 1 to 5 this 125 mm slab and then our stair slab which we defined again in etaps all of these have been exported to our model here and this column stiff property which i discussed during the design of mat foundation has also been exported here so this is also okay and after this what i would like to do is i would like to go to define and load patterns you can see that all those load patterns that has that were defined in etabs have been imported into safe now let me just click on cancel and then finally let's see some of the loads that have been imported into our safe software here for that go to display and show loads let's first look at normal live load you can see that a normal live load of 4 kilo newton or 4 newton per millimeter square this area load has been exported live normal load has been exported as area loads here this different color of this gradient represents the different magnitude of live load that is acting onto our slab system here again go to display show loads you can see that floor finish loads also have been imported and if you want to see the earthquake loads that are imported here you can see these earthquake loads are acting at point loads here you can see that earthquake loads are being acted as point loads here so in this way by going to display and show loads option you can check whether your loads has been properly imported into this software or not so after this work is complete here i have a short slide some short presentation here about how the crack section analysis is performed for etaps and this slides i have prepared from the information available from the csi america website you can also visit that website and read there also i have written the link here so how are cracked sections analyzed in safe we discussed about the concept of cracked section at the beginning so there are two types of cracked section analysis available one is the immediate cracked deflection and another is the long-term cracked deflection accounting for creep and shrinkage so there are two methods to perform crack section analysis in safe software i have written those two methods here so i will make available this uh, presentation in pdf format in our facebook page inquisitive engineer also so if you want this presentation you can download i will post the link in our facebook page youtube which name is the same as our youtube channel inquisitive engineer so there are two ways to perform crack section analysis in safe we won't discuss the both ways here we will only deal with one way to perform crack section analysis and that is this first method here so in this first method what we do is we will define some load case for immediate cracked deflection for long-term crack deflection we will define a load case in safe and all load patterns are applied in that single load case so that load case can either be for immediate deflection or long-term cracked deflection so 
to perform track section analysis we define load case in shift that load case may relate either to immediate crack deflection or long term crack deflection and all the load patterns are applied in that load case itself so for immediate crack deflection all these loads dead load superimposed dead load and live load are applied in a single load pattern then analysis is run with the crack analysis option and for long term crack deflection there are two categories one is for the non sustained portion of the live load in which crack section analysis considers only the non sustained portion of live load and another is the sustained portion in which the crack analysis considers the sustained loading from dead superimposed dead load and a portion of the live load and in this sustained portion only creep and shrinkage are included because the effects of creep and shrinkage are applicable or seen only under sustained loading so there are two portions of our loads so one is the non sustained portion and another is the sustained portion both of these types of load are dealt with for in long term crack deflection so we will define load cases for immediate crack deflection and long term crack deflection and we will compare the value of these cracked deflection value to the value that we obtained for non cracked option that is for the linear combination of our load patterns so let me now let me skip these steps we will perform these steps in safe itself and these control of deflection this deflection allowable values i will discuss at last after getting the value of all the deflection for both linear combination and crack deflection so let me go to safe for now we have exported everything from etabs we checked the loads that are exported into this program and before beginning with analysis there are some certain steps to follow after importing our model from etabs itself and what i would like to do is first we have already checked the loads now we will define load cases as we discussed in our presentation slide we have to define load cases for immediate crack deflection and also for long term crack deflection so go to define and then load cases and in this option you can see that already some default load cases have been generated for the load patterns that we defined and imported from etabs so we will define add new case here uh, let me just say before defining a new load case here that you may want to skip or you may not want to include these earthquake forces while designing for your slab system it may depend upon the type of project that you are considering the complexity of the project or the importance of the project but you may also ignore these earthquake loads while designing for the floor slabs so now let's go to defining a new load case and i will rename this load case as immediate all loads immediate on loads so this is for the immediate cracked deflection and for this immediate all loads i these load patterns that i will apply for this load case is our dead load superimposed dead load and live load all with a scale factor of 1 so let me select this dead load and floor finish is also a dead load normal live load storage live load masonry loads partition load roof live you can ignore this roof live also because this is not our roof level floor slab here so let me just select another load here another is stair live so i have included all our dead and superimposed dead loads and live load with a scale factor of 1 here and these load patterns have been applied to our 
this load case immediate all loads to check for immediate deflection and the analysis type will be non-linear correct this convergence tolerance leave the default value and then left click on ok so our one load case has been defined now let's add a new case here what i will do is i will add a copy of this load case so i will just select this immediate load case and then add copy of case i will rename this as long term sustained so for this load case long term sustained we are going to look at the long term deflection of our slab for sustained loads so the loads applied will be the same dead load superimposed dead load and live load but the factor for live load will be 0.25 since we consider that only 25 percentage of our live load is sustained and only that sustained portion of live load contributes to the creep and shrinkage phenomenon so for the live loads change the scale factor to 0.25 for all live loads here and then for this since this is concerned with creep and shrinkage we have to select the analysis type is non-linear long-term cracked and creep coefficient and shrinkage strain you may change the value of these coefficients based on the code that you are designing and analyzing i will leave the default values and then click on ok and after long term sustained, I will add another load case here. I will select this long term sustained and left click on modify showcase. I will rename the load case as immediate sustained now. Immediate sustained. These loads and load factors, this scale factor will be the same as for the load case that we just defined previously, long term sustained only the difference that this analysis type will be non-linear cracked here since this is for sustained loads but not accounting for creep and shrinkage and then left click on ok and then left click on ok save your model okay Let's go to my slide and let's look at what we have done till now. So what we did was we defined load cases and we applied all of our load patterns into that load case. And our load case we defined for both immediate and long term cracked deflection. So for long term cracked deflection, we analyzed or we defined our load cases into two types one was for non-sustained portion for which we defined the load cases immediate sustained and for sustained portion we defined our load cases long-term sustained in this sustained portion and in this sustained portion analysis we considered the effect of creep and shrinkage also so what happened is that what the website in our website for safe our wiki or our csi america website what it says is that assume that 25 percentage of the live load is sustained so we put the scale factor is 0.25 for sustained portion of live load so analysis proceeds as follows case one cracked section for short term load with short term concrete modulus is given as dead plus superimposed dead plus phi s live in which phi s is one so we defined one load case at first which was our load case for immediate all loads and for immediate all loads we used this three this load patterns here dead superimposed dead and live all with a scale factor of one so this was our first load case and second load case we defined for this cracked analysis for permanent load with short term concrete modulus dead superimposed dead plus phi l live in which phi l is 0.25 this we defined i think in our third load case that is for immediate sustained and in our second load case 
long term sustained we define this long term cracked analysis with creep and shrinkage for permanent load with long term concrete modulus so our long term sustained load case is related with consideration of creep and shrinkage in our concrete and finally after defining these three load cases we have to combine these load cases in our one of our load combinations so the value of total long term deflection is then the linear combination of case 3 plus case 1 minus case 2 so you can see here case 1 means short term load with short term concrete modulus and case 2 is short term concrete modulus but permanent load so if you see if you subtract case 2 from case 1 you can see that this dead load will be cancelled superimposed dead load will be cancelled and 100 percentage of live load minus 25 percentage of live load means 75 percentage of live load so this is for non-sustained portion and the remaining 25 percentage of live load which is the sustained portion is given from case 3 so case 1 minus case 2 gives 75 percentage plus case 3 gives the remaining 25 percentage so total of 100 percentage of live load is considered in this load combination so now let's define a load combination considering the load cases that we have just managed here so go to define and load combinations first what i would like to do is i will add a new combo one combination i would like to establish or i would like to define for the linear deflection so i will rename this as 1 plus 0 dead load plus 1 plus 0 live load plus 1 plus 0 superimposed dead load the combination type will be linear addition so you can see that our all dead loads have been defined in this 1.0 dead load so i will select this load 1.0 dead load and scale factor of 1 okay before going this let me see what is defined in 1 plus 0 dead load all of our dead loads have been defined here and in 1 plus 0 live load normal our except our storage live load other live loads have been included here so what i will do is for this linear load combination 1 plus 0 dead load with scale factor 1 1 plus 0 live load normal with scale factor 1 and then live storage with scale factor of 1 so these three loads have been added to form a linear combination to check for linear deflection and then left click and ok and then add another new combination here let's name this combination as long term and you can see you know, in our slide we looked at what we will do is in this case we will add our three load cases that we defined one was our immediate all loads another was immediate sustained and another was where is long term sustained has it been defined or not let me check once again define uh, load cases okay long term sustained has not been defined yet so what i would like to do is let me go to this immediate sustained here and okay this has been modified i guess let me just check this immediate all load seats okay immediate sustained okay non-linear crack okay let me just select this and add copy of case let's change this to long term sustained the factor is the same except select this analysis type is non-linear long term crack and then click on ok then go to define load combinations in this long term load case i have added this immediate all loads and immediate sustained and finally i will add this long term sustained now what will happen is you have to subtract our load case of immediate sustained from our load case of immediate all loads so the scale factor will be minus one for immediate sustained and plus one for other two load cases since we saw what we have to do here
our load combination should be case 3 plus case 1 minus case 2. So for this case 2, our scale factor will be minus 1 here because of this negative sign. So for immediate sustain, I selected the scale factor is minus 1 and then left click and OK. Left click and OK. Save your model. So once we have defined all of our load cases and load combinations, before going for analysis and design options, what I would like to do is, I would like to add design strips. Design strips concept we looked at during the design of math foundation also. To be able to see analysis results and then design results, we have to draw design strips. So let's go to draw and then go to draw design strips. So let's go to draw, draw design strips. The type of object will be strip, strip layer A, strip design type, let's select as column strip and let's select the width of our strip of is one meter. Okay, draw, draw design strips. So okay, one design strips has been drawn here. Now let's select the design strips and go to edit, replicate. And I would like to replicate this in our y direction at an interval of one meter and let's say the number of increments be 30. Okay, 30 is not needed here. So what I will do is, I'll just delete this here. And then again, go to draw option, draw design strips. Now I will select the strip layer B for other direction and other type will be the same here. So let's draw design strip here. And then select this. So has it been drawn or not? No, I think. Let's go to draw, draw design strips. We draw design strips in this direction. Now select this design strip. Okay, this has been selected one design strip selected you can see at the left bottom corner and then go to edit replicate now i'd like to replicate these design strips in the negative x direction so i will replicate it for in every one meter here so dy0 number of increments let's say 20. okay so now this is not needed here Okay, let's leave these design strips as it is. Now, after drawing the design strips, let's go to assign. Sorry, not assign. Go to uh, let's go to run and then check for cracking analysis options. So, reinforcement source. I will select this from finite element based design for now. And the minimum reinforcing ratios used for cracking analysis, I will leave these as the default values. And finally, let's go to design and design preferences and our design code, let's select is IS456-2000 and left click on OK. Now I can run the model. So let's go to run and then run analysis. So since safe uses an iterative procedure for analysis, it may take some time. So it will obviously take some longer time for this analysis of our slab here. Just 
data analysis is being done for now. Now you will see the deflected shape of our slab. So this is the displacement under dead load shear. So now let's go to display and then show deformed shape. Now let's go to display and let's go to show deformed shape here. So we want to first see our deformation under elastic load combination that is let's say like this 1.0 dead load plus 1.0 live load plus 1.0 superimposed dead load apply. So this is our deflection of our slab under elastic load combination and if you see at the bottom you can see that our maximum deflection is mm, let's see here. 6.31 mm so this is our maximum deflection let me just open a notepad and for linear load combination our maximum deflection is 6.31 mm and then let's select another load combination here for this long term load combination what will be our deflection so let's see here now our maximum deflection is 37.84 mm for long term load combination so for long term load combination our deflection is 37.84 0.84 mm and again now let's go to this option load case here and then select this long term sustained load case and then apply you can see that our long term sustained load case gives us the value of maximum deflection is 29.93 mm if you go on to this diagram here also and focus on our color where the maximum deformation or deflection is taking place you can find these values here also since these red values at the bottom represents that point with maximum deflection if you zoom on to this point here and then over onto this gradients here you can see or you can find the value of maximum deflection or if you look at this bottom left corner minimum 29.93 mm so for our long term sustained load case our deflection is 29.93 mm similarly for our immediate sustain you can see maximum deflection is 9.38 mm and also for our immediate all loads our maximum deflection here is 17.37 mm so for immediate all loads load case our maximum deflection is 13.098 mm so after writing these values here let's go to our presentation slide and let's look at this last slide this slide I extracted it from the IS-456 code in which clause 23.2 talks about control of deflection. So this clause is applicable to both the deflection of our beams as well as slab. So what this clause says is that the deflection of a structure or part thereof shall not adversely affect the appearance or efficiency of the structure or finishes or partitions. The deflection shall generally be limited to the following. Now let's see the maximum limiting deflection values. First, what it says is that the final deflection due to all loads including the effects of temperature, creep 
and shrinkage and measured from the edge cast level of the support of floors, roofs and all other horizontal members should not normally exceed span by 250. So if you consider creep and shrinkage effect also, the final deflection should not exceed span by 250. And another is the deflection including the effects of temperature, creep and shrinkage occurring after erection of partitions and the application of finishes should not normally exceed span by 350 or 20 mm. So one is span by 250 and another is span by 350 or 20 mm. So if you go to our model here and you can see that our maximum deflection is occurring in the slabs at the middle portion here at this middle portion so what i would like to do is if you go to my etaps model let's take the larger dimension of this slab here that is 6.749 meter and find the value of limiting deflection so if we consider the first case which says that span by 250 you can see that 6749 mm 6749 mm divided by 250 so case 1 gives us the limiting value is 6749 divided by 250 which is approximately 27 mm and another is span by 350 or 20 mm so 6749 divided by 350 or 20 mm. So let me do this 6749 divided by 350. You get 19.28 mm. So we take the lesser value which is 19.28 or you may take 20 mm also. So now let's look here. Okay, let's look here now. Let's see the long term load combination gave us the deflection value to be 37.84 mm, whereas our codal provision is that the maximum deflection should be limited to 27 mm. Or if you compare this to let's not let's leave this long term load combination and if you compare this value to the deflection that we have obtained under long term sustained load case 29.93 mm whereas our limiting deflection value according to the code is 27 mm so the actual value of deflection is greater than the limiting value of deflection this means you may have to increase the depth of the slab so the current depth of the slab that we are providing is not sufficient for long term sustained load case whereas for the immediate load case our deflection is 13.098 mm and our codal value for limiting deflection is 19.28 mm so for immediate load case the deflection that is coming onto our slab is okay but for long term sustained load case the deflection that is coming onto our slab is a little bit greater than the expected value according to our code so you have to increase the depth of the slab to fulfill this long term sustained load case deflection codal provision so this is how you check for deflection patterns or deflection long term and immediate deflection and then compare that deflection with the codal provisions that is mandatory so after checking for deflection and once you have adjusted the value of your, the depth of your slab accordingly to account for deflection we have already defined design strips so what we will do is we will go to design and design combos you can see this design combinations here let me just click cancel and then we will go to run analysis and design option so now design will also be carried out so I think it is already completed. So let me just go to display and then show slab design. So now this option is the same as we discussed during the design of mat foundation. I will not go into detail. You may 
revisit our channel on YouTube and then study our video or watch our video relating to design of mat foundation in SIF. So design basis will be strip based. Let me just uh, first the reinforcing display type will be show number of bar subsize. What I will do is first let me select the display option is show values at controlling stations and diagram and show rebar above specified value. I will select this reinforcing specified in slab rebar objects or I will select this option here typical uniform reinforcing specified below. I am thinking of using 8 mm dia bar set 150 mm spacing in both directions here. So if this bar size and distribution that we are applying here is sufficient then no extra bars will be displayed in our diagram here. But if it is not sufficient we want to display the number of bars of size 8 mm the amount that is only insufficient and then apply. So after applying this you see that for layer A only this 8 mm dia bar in 6 mm or 6 inch spacing or 150 mm spacing is not sufficient at only one location here. You can see that one extra barrier 8 mm diameter is required in this location. Similarly for layer B at these two places it is not sufficient. So we have assigned that we will use 8 mm dia bars for both top and bottom layers at a spacing of 150 mm and these reinforcing bar that is displayed here is showing us that this distribution this size and bar size and distribution is not sufficient at these two locations for layer B and here we have to use two extra bars and one extra bar this is for for example, if I only choose this show top bar option and then apply, you can see that these top bars are insufficient at this location. And similarly for bottom bars, the bottom bars are sufficient. So this is the way to check for the reinforcement in your slab and also in other mat foundation and slab systems. So most probably this 8 mm dia bar at a spacing of 150 mm will be very much sufficient for us. So let's click and close. So this is how you design reinforced concrete slab floors in safe software. And we discussed in detail here regarding the cracked section analysis in which we checked for long term deflection in our slab. And we checked for the deflection that is coming onto our slab with the values of limiting deflection is prescribed in our design code. So this brings us to the end of our current lecture. So this our YouTube playlist on the design of a reinforced concrete multi-story office building based on the Nepal National Building Code also comes to an end. So in our upcoming lectures, we will look at some miscellaneous topics. For example, the design of eccentric footing with beams or the design of any other type of staircase that we have not discussed up till now. So we will discuss in some miscellaneous design procedures in our upcoming lectures, not a separate long playlist but on some specific topics that may interest you. And we will finally, uh, we may also look at the detailing criteria that is prescribed in the updated Nepal National Building Code for beam, slab, columns. So some sections have been added in our latest version of upcoming or our latest version of Nepal National Building Code regarding detailing also. We will look at some detailing criteria based on our own code. So we will meet again soon at our next lecture. Thank you.